Okay, so our application has deployed successfully. As you can see down here, it's deployed successfully. These are the various paths. Now let's come into our Insomnia client here. And then let me just close those like this. Now we, we have various protected resources in here. Let's start with the, let me just come here again. Now the list resource is a protected resource. So let's start with that. Let me hit send. And then it says no valid string token found. Okay, now let's go into this class. Let's come to the to do rest class and then use the list again. So the to do rest class is hosted at to do. So let's come to to do and then the list class in the to do rest class. So let's come here and change this to to do list. Let's hit send. So you see, even in the to do rest class, our, our, our JWT security uh, token layer is still being invoked by the JAX Harris runtime for us. So our filter is what is running so far. When we come even to this particular class, when we come to the, the list resource, when we access the list resource, we still get the same thing. Now, it's interesting that in the to do rest class, which is hosted at the to do path here, which is what we are accessing here like this. Even in this class, when we make a request to any method here, the filter still gets invoked, even though we annotated it once at this level, because again, we said this particular, the target for this annotation is method and then the tag. So that's exactly what is being invoked here. So any, any method in this class here that we invoke, we are, we are going to get the same thing. We're going to get an error because we are not duly authenticated. So now let's come in here to do user rest, this one. Let's start off by creating a to do user. So let's come here. Let's change this to forward slash user. And let's change this to forward slash create. And then let's create a user, let's say post, like this, the body is going to be JSON. So I'll just paste in my, my JSON on the clipboard here. So let's see if everything is okay. Now let's hit send. Okay, so we have our user created in the database with a hashed password. You'd always want or you, you never want to keep a user's plain text password anywhere in your system. Never ever do that. So we have the hashed password here. Again, this password hashing here is done. It's from our security util. Let's go to security util here. From here, this is where all that magic is happening. Hash and sort password. Our hash iteration is 200, uh, 2 million actually, and all of that. So, what you're seeing, this particular hashing here, is from that particular bit of code and all of that. So, we have our user created in the database. Now, let's go and log in. Let me just copy the password here. Again, only the user can create the same hash as this one because they have their password. So all we do is to take this password, then hash whatever they pass and compare it to what is in the database. If they're too much, we know is that user, and then we grant access. So let's come to user for slash login. And then let me just delete this. Then we come here. This time around, we're using form URL encoded like this. The first field is email, the value is bush at blah.com and then the second field is password the value is this now again this particular request here is coming to this particular to do user rest this particular resource here this particular resource here now this resource here takes a form object the jack Sarah's runtime will extract the values from the various uh, fields that we are sending so the the first field is email the second field is password as we have here it doesn't matter the password can come first email can come second it doesn't really matter the JSRS runtime will still do the most important thing is that the names here should match what we have here like that fine so let's come in here let's hit send then we should have our json web token generated for us if all goes well okay so no uh, body return for response but if we come to the header 
our JSON Web Token has been generated for us with the name Bearer. So let me come to my server console here. Let me scroll down. So this is our JSON Web Token generated. Let me copy all of this here. Oops, copy all of this here. Right click, copy. Good. Now let me just paste this in my text editor, my notepad here so that we can easily copy it. Now let's come to our Insomnia client again. Let's come to the to-do user rest class first. Let's look at a method that is that requires authentication, the same list method in the to-do user rest class here. Let's come and access this particular protected resource method here. So let's come here. Now that we are logged in, we have the JWT. Now this is where JavaScript client, you would have stored this somewhere on local storage or something, and then you pass it up with subsequent request. Now let's come and make a request to the protected resource, this particular list resource. It's a, it's a get method, so let's come here. First of all, there's nobody here. Let's come here and say get loser and say list like this now this time around because this is a protected resource here we need a jwt because any request that we make to this particular resource here our filter will check the header for the authorization bit here in the header so let's come here and set that let's come to the auth tab here click on this particular hamburger menu is it hamburger? Doesn't matter. Drop down menu here. And then we come, the, these are the various authentication methods you can use in the Insomnia REST client. What we are interested in is the bearer token, this one. So click bearer token. Now you can see this is the token field where you paste in your JWT. So let's paste in our JWT in here. That's what we've pasted. Now the prefix, when we come to the token generation here, when we generated the token and we were sending to the client the to do user rest class here, when we generated the token here and we were sending to the client, we prefixed it with the word bearer in here. So this bearer word here, we just set it as a constant here. We prefixed it with the word bearer. Now you can see that when we are adding the token to this particular request, there's a prefix field here, which is optional. If you you have a different prefix or the API you are accessing, according to its documentation, there's a different prefix, then you enter it here. Otherwise, the default is bearer. As you can see here, the default, this particular field defaults to bearer, so we can leave it as it is. And then we can make the request again. Our security, tab here, you come down here, you choose the bearer token, and then you enter the JWT here. Let's hit send. Oh, okay, need to change this. This is supposed to be JSON. We still pick the initial one, good. So now let me hit send like this. Good, so you can see that when we passed in our security, our JWT here, it still went and, and, and returned a result for us. So there's a list of all the users in the system like this. This is awesome, huh? We made a request to a protected resource here. Protected resource, this particular list method here. Initially, we were denied access, but once we created a user, then we logged in that user and got a JWT in return. Then we were making the request, we passed the JWT. If you look at the timeline here, this is the request that went to the server. So we made a GET request to the list resource method in the user's resource class here. And then when we, uh, what we are interested in is this. See the authorization. Then there is the bearer here. And then this is the JWT we passed. And then all of this went to our server. Our server grabbed this. All of that was done in this filter here. It, it grabbed that particular token and then passed it. When passing succeeded, execution continued, the request was allowed to go through. Now let's come again and then intentionally change something in this JWT. So this let's change this particular age, for instance, to V. 
and then let's send and see something okay so you can see unauthorized we've got the unauthorized message here this request requires HTTP authentication blah 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 so once the JWT person did not succeed because we changed something in it the request was aborted with the unauthorized HTTP status code hopefully everything is clear once we we pass in a valid J JSON token in our request header here the same thing the same process everything but there's an error this particular JWT is not valid so our server validated it and realized that no it doesn't work so an exception was thrown and then the request was aborted let's come again and then send the right JSON token let me just paste all of it let me send it again then you can see this time I got 200 we got a result in return so we've essentially secured our application with the JSON web token uh, style of authentication which is the bearer token style of authentication or authenticating restful web services it's very simple and straightforward and very powerful using the JAX arrest filters construct so now uh, to do user rest class here secured let's come in and create some to do stuff some to do object in our database again let me just come here let's see how the to do is so we have the the task and then we have the due date here these two things must be set so let's come and then try to create a to do in the to do rest class here create a to do and then see if everything we've done to this point is okay if or if there are errors that we need to fix so let's come and create a to do object 